A friend and colleague has been asking me to do an episode on bed bugs for quite some time. I've been pushing it off because I hate bugs. But they're back, and he asked me again, and you can only avoid the pain for so long. Bed bugs are the topic of this week's healthcare triage. Bed bugs are tiny, flat bugs whose only source of nutrition is the blood of humans and other animals. They're about one to seven millimeters in length, and they're also pretty hardy in that they can go without a blood feast for months and still live. They're found all over the world. They infest the places people sleep because they feed on sleeping animals. They hide during the day in all kinds of nooks and crannies or around beds. They can move up to about 100 feet a night, but they spend the vast majority of their time in about an eight foot radius around where people sleep. The good news is they don't fly. They're not crazy fast either. They can maybe do a meter a minute if they're really pushing it. They also reproduce slowly, maybe an egg a day, which might sound fast until you consider the fact that a fly can lay about 500 eggs in a couple of days. The bad or awesome news, depending on your viewpoint, is how they reproduce. They use what's known as traumatic insemination. It turns out that male bed bugs are <laughs> Female bed bugs have genital tracts of reproduction, but male bed bugs don't seem to care. Instead, they use their genitals to literally stab the female bed bugs in the abdomen. Then they deposit their sperm into the wound they just caused. Then they leave the female wounded and bleeding because she was just stabbed in the abdomen by a male bedbug's genitals. This, not surprisingly, isn't so good for the female. She slinks off and tries to heal. Meanwhile, the sperm in her abdomen swim around until they find the ovaries. Then they start to fertilize eggs. These eggs get dropped for about four to six weeks. Since females want to hide and heal while this is going on, it's actually more likely that they will move onto luggage or backpacks when they're pregnant. Therefore, the bed bug you bring into your house or bedroom is slightly more likely to be one to drop eggs for weeks. Awesome. This next bit isn't terribly relevant information, but I want to share it with you anyway. Consider this a behind the scenes look at how I make a script. While I was reviewing the literature, I came upon a paper in the journal Animal Behavior. Homosexual interactions in bed bugs alarm pheromones as male recognition signals. Turns out that the signal for a male to mate with another bed bug is being all full of blood, but since they don't use female genitals to mate, cause they're <laughs> they can actually stab just about any bed bug in the gut. Since the other males don't like this, they've developed a pheromone to tell other males to back off after they've eaten. If scientists block this pheromone, the males start traumatically inseminating each other. If they give that pheromone to the females, less traumatic insemination takes place. Go ahead, try and unremember all of that. Now you know what it's like to make healthcare triage. Anyway, bed bugs don't spread disease, but the bites can cause allergic reactions. This can lead to itching and discomfort, and if you scratch it enough, you can get a secondary infection. They're not a dirty thing either. Sure, they can live in dumps, but they can also live in amazingly fancy places. They can live in movie theaters, trains, couches, lots of locations. The CDC lists some helpful hints to check and see if you have a bed bug infestation. These include the bed bugs exoskeletons after molting, bed bugs in the folds of mattresses or sheets, rusty colored blood spots due to their blood filled fecal material that they excrete on the mattress or nearby furniture, and a sweet musty odor. Lots of people never know that they've been bitten, so they don't freak out and get concerned. And that's how the bed bugs exploit us. We're often the means by which they travel. They hide in our luggage and in our clothes when we travel. Then they move into the next place we go. That's why they're a real concern in hotels, because traveling people can take them home and cause further problems. But they don't travel on people. They don't like the heat our bodies put off. So don't worry that you're infested like you might be with lice. Won't happen. It's also a way we can kill them. Make a room hot enough, 45 degrees Celsius or 113 degrees Fahrenheit, and they die. But that's not easy to do. If you've been bitten, there's not much you should do. Try not to scratch the site. Take an antihistamine if you think you're having a mild allergic reaction, and call a doctor if you think it's more serious than that. This, of course, should not be construed as medical advice. We're not telling you to take any pills, and if you think you might need to do anything, you should call and talk to your physician. The biggest, most important thing to do is to get rid of the bed bug infestation, and that's hard to do. They're resistant to most of the common pesticides we might use, so buying bug spray is a waste of time. Fumigation and heat treatments can work, but they can cost thousands of dollars for a house. You can try cleaning them away, and that sometimes works, but you need to get all of them, and it's hard to be sure of that. And bed bugs have been on the rise. In the early 1990s, we were relatively free of them here in the United States, but world travel has changed that. Now bed bugs are in all 50 states and all over the world. They're in high class hotels and sometimes causing a panic, but you should keep calm. They're not gonna hurt you. They're more of a nuisance than a crisis. 
Healthcare Triage is supported in part by viewers like you through Patreon, a service that allows you to support the show through a monthly donation. We'd like to thank all our Patreon supporters in general and thank our honorary research associate, Cameron Alexander, specifically. Thanks, Cameron. Learn how you can become a patron at patreon.com slash healthcare triage.